Hey everyone, welcome back to Retro Tech. And today I've got a brand new series I'm starting called CRT Market Watch. That's right, I'm gonna look at recent Sony PVM and BVM CRT sales. Now this is gonna be specifically on eBay for this first edition of Market Watch. So we're gonna be looking at sales data specifically on just Sony PVMs and BVMs uh, sold during October and November uh, in 2019. So again, that's the fall of 2019. We're looking at about 30 to 35 days of sales data. Now the sales prices I'm gonna show to you do include shipping, and there's also gonna be notes on each sale uh, about the condition of the monitors and how they were sold in. And then at the end, I'm gonna highlight some very interesting and specific monitor sales that did occur over the past month. All right, so let's go ahead and get started now. And uh, before we go any further, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe this video if you do like the content. And uh, we are trying to help Retro Tech grow. All right, so first off, we're going to start with the Sony PVM 1344Q. So the first group of monitors here are all analog uh, only monitors and more of the lower end PVM types. So this is a 13 inch monitor. We've got three sales recently on this one, and this is pretty pretty cheap for this monitor. Uh, most of these were tested to power on, but most also needed some type of repair, and that's pretty much why they're cheap. I mean, it, if you could get uh, any PVM for under $100 shipped, then most of the time it's for parts only, which was the case for this one on the 25th. However, this 180, 287, and 137, 27 did test to power on and could have uh, had good screens, just probably needed some adjustments as far as those uh, potentiometers inside of that monitor for geometry. So the next monitor is a little bit better of a model. This is a 1351Q. I've done a few videos on this monitor and uh, we've had some sales data for these monitors sold over the last month. And specifically that first transaction there on the 25th, take a look at that, that is $458.47. That was advertised as restored. Now, as far as I could tell in the restoration, there was some cap replacement, not complete cap replacement, and then just some calibrations for colors as well as just geometry were performed on that one. So that's why it's a little bit higher than the rest. Uh, but the others were pretty much just power tested. Again, that 11-8-2019 was tested to power on, but not really more than that. And the other two were tested to power on and did show a screen similar to what you see in this picture here, uh, but did not have all the tests run on it. But still, for $200 shipped, there were a couple of decent PVMs that uh, were sold on eBay, and that's a pretty good price. Other 13-inch monitor sales of note, there was one 1353MD that went for almost $300, a 1354Q, which went for $127, and then a 14N6U, which is the RGB monitor type of that very basic build out on the N series. Uh, that one sold for $225. Now the 1354Q, which is this monitor down here on the right, uh, was, or the bottom corner, was actually listed for parts only. So just so you know that, again, a lot of those ones that are going between 100 to 130, 40 dollars are listed as pretty much turning on but needing a, a definite uh, at least some repairs to get back to a, a good screen. Again, let's just move on to the 14M2 sales. This was a monitor that moved a lot last month, and it's been moving a lot uh, over the last few months. It's a very high-end uh, uh, analog monitor that only does 240p and 480i, but we've got a dozen sales or half a dozen sales on this monitor got a couple that are right around $200, which were just power tested, and then $265. And then these ones that were over $300 were tested and would have shown some type of a game on them or they've been used. So you could probably get one of these and not expect to have to do a whole lot of adjustments, but they wouldn't have been recalibrated or restored most likely. And then the 200 and the 205 ones were very limited testing and most likely parts. I did note that one monitor was uh, this 1017 for $500. That one was advertised as new in box. Now you did see my eBay video about things being advertised as new in box. So you never really know without getting it and seeing if it's actually new. 
but I'm going to assume that, that even at new in box, that's a pretty good price. Again, even though it's new, it's still going to be 20, 15 to 20 years old. So there's still a capability for the um, cap capacitors to dry up. And also adjustments need to be made. But pretty interesting that there still was a $500 new monitor sold, uh, at least listed as sold on eBay. The 14M2 doesn't move as much, or 14M4U, I'm sorry, doesn't move as much as the M2, but there were still plenty of sales. Again, these were listed as tested, but not really serviced. And you're moving up a little bit more since you're getting a more premium monitor with uh, 800 TV lines. You're getting up to about that $400 range. Again, just for the monitor that's pretty much tested and uh, used with games, but not serviced. And the 14L2 is another monitor that's starting to move a whole lot more. And I'm sure that the reason the 14M2 and the L2 are moving more is because there's becoming less of a stock of the really higher end monitors, but these ones are still very, very good uh, PVMs. They represent some of the best 14 inch PVMs that are not an L5. Uh, the L2 and the M2 are very good monitors. So we've got four sales uh, figures here for this time period and most of those are over $400 you notice the most recent two were about 450 each these did include shipping but again they're not uh, recapped or very often not even listed as recalibrated at all so that's just what you should know and then when you get that 299 it was just power tested and didn't have any screen testing done to it I'm sorry, I went one too far, but we've got 20 M2 and M4 sales data here. Again, these M series models are moving a whole lot, especially uh, in the 14 M2s. And then we actually see a lot of 20 M4s move and a couple 20 M2s here in the last month. So we've, first we've got a very expensive M2 that was sold for $900 shipped. I couldn't find any figures on whether that was actually restored or anything. It didn't say it was. So that one might have just been one that went a little bit higher than it should. The others were going around 550, and then we get into the M4s, which are sold at upwards of over 700 to 800 dollars as far as a 20-inch one. That's not again been restored. There was one that was listed as restored. That was the fourth one you'll notice on the very bottom of our list of monitors. That one was listed again as restored. Some capacitor replacement as well as calibration done to color and um, geometry. And that one went for $800, but the other ones were not listed so much as having any kind of cap work done. And you could see there was one that sold on the 22nd for $828. The 20M4 that um, was sold for $386, that one definitely needed screen repairs, including capacitors at the least. So I saw that one, it definitely had some issues on it. So here are just the other Sony 20-inch PVM sales. Again, non-multi-format. These are only standard definition monitors. There was a 2030 that went for $430, a 1953 MD that is very similar to that 20M2. That sold for $285. So if that one worked out well, someone got a really great deal on that monitor. The 20N2U, another RGB, very basic monitor. That one went for $172, and a 20L2 was also sold for about $600. Now, we'll tell you that I do know that the top one and the bottom one were tested and looked good, and so was the 20N2U. They were power tested. No restoration had been done to these, and um, those first two models can be quite old and could be troublesome, so they most likely needed probably a couple adjustments and repairs. The Sony PVM multi-format sales. Now, this is a more interesting thing. Now, as I said, the inventory on these is very fluctuating. Sometimes we'll go months without seeing a 20L5 or 14L5 even listed on eBay or online for sale, mostly because these multi-formats um, are becoming harder to come by. But here's the ones that were listed and sold. Now, first off, there was a 14L5 sold on the 30th for $756. And again, that one was listed as restored. So it was partial recap as well as calibration of cap or uh, calibration of geometry and color, but it, it was not anything else than that. Just a little bit of restoration going on. 
And then the one under that was actually not listed as restored at all, but it did have some pictures of the screen working and it sold for $849. So those ones are still going, the L5 is going very, very expensive, still selling for a lot of money. And then you've got the 20 L5, which sold on the 14th for just over $1,000 shipped, which is pretty standard. And especially for one that's not been recalibrated or capacitors replaced. And then you got a largely untested monitor on the 23rd that wound up going for $752. So that was a great deal if that one actually worked to get a seven to get a 20L5 that uh, shipped to you for only $753 roughly. All right, so there were some Sony BVM sales, and again, I thought that this time at this time of the year, the reason there were so many more M series being sold is because there's a lot less sales of these really high-end multi-format monitors. Now, this month there were quite a few A series that sold surprisingly, a couple of 14-inch A series, and these both sold for $200, $260 shipped. That's a great price for those monitors. But you have to remember, they did not include any kind of analog board on the majority, at least those first three uh, sales. They didn't include an analog board. So you can't, it's a pain to get analog signal into that monitor, uh, especially without those analog boards, because the boards are really rare. So most of the time, the monitors are used as parts or backup monitors if someone has that. Uh, elusive 68x card which the very last sale on here there's a 24e1wu actually did sell on the 20th uh, for over five thousand dollars shipped and it did include a 68x and other cards it was listed as being uh, adjusted had relatively low hours but just definitely the biggest sale of the last couple months as far as a bvm or even any crt is concerned the D series, there were a couple D series sales. There was a 14 inch that went for 800. Again, working 14 inch, uh, but they did all, and, and each one of these listings did include the appropriate cards for RGB. So this might be why they're a little bit more on the first couple. That D20 also included the appropriate cards, $2,200. And then the D24, which is one of the best monitors available, sold for $3,000. Still demanding this D-Series a lot of money. All right, so I'm going to look at a sp couple specific sales that happened last month and just highlight them briefly. I'm not going to show you the uh, sellers, but if you go and research this on eBay, you'll probably be able to find these transactions. The first one was this 20L5. Again, this listing did say that the monitor had been turned on and power tested, but again, you have no idea what the screen looked like because there wasn't a single picture on um, the listing that showed the monitor powered on or anything like that. However, it still went for, again, that $750 mark. So I wanted to show you that specific sale where that monitor went for $750. And again, if that turns on, that's a pretty good deal for a Sony PVM 20 L5 multi-format monitor. And then, of course, the last one I wanted to highlight was this crazy BVM A series sale. Now, look, if you're watching this and you bought this, congratulations. You have one of the greatest monitors that I've never even had the opportunity to see in person. Uh, but uh, you could probably guess who sold this uh, just based on the advertisement here. However, I did want to point out some very interesting things about this sale. Now, I hope this went well for the buyer uh, because we all know how shipping such a large monitor can be because it did say this one was shipped. Uh, but again, over $5,000. It did include the 68X card, which is, again, that super rare card. And uh, again, a widescreen format on here. However, I do have to bring this up because this monitor was sold on October 20th at 2.49 a.m. So that's uh, Sunday morning at 2.49 a.m. So I don't know if somebody just got done partying and maybe maybe made a little bit of a, uh, um, a late night party by here, but uh, that's pretty crazy that something like that would happen on eBay. But hey, that's what eBay is all about and for, is for people to do crazy things with their money. And again, I'm sure that whoever bought this was thinking about it for a long time 
and really wanted this monitor, uh, even if they did make it uh, the purchase at the very end of the night in the wee early hours of the morning on October 20th. I hope they got it and are extremely happy with it. But uh, that's going to conclude Market Watch. Just to sum things up, again, we're going to see a lot of M2s uh, and M4s are moving right now. And again, I think that has to do with more of the lack of higher quality than that monitor is available for sale. And once you get over that threshold, you're looking at spending darn near $1,000 most of the time uh, for anything that's 20 inches or more in uh, the form of a multi-format monitor or even the highest end PVMs and BVMs. Thanks again for watching. Please, again, let me know what you think with a comment below and what you think of the new show. Uh, I do really appreciate anybody who watched the last two episodes that I put up that were showcasing the Grand Old Game Room Expo and uh, panel discussion that I was involved with there. Uh, thank you for watching that, and just look for some more great stuff to come in the future from Retro Tech, and I'll see you guys next time with some more retro content.